Hello guys, today we're taking a look at Clarendon, and this is going to be episode 21 of Minecraft Castles and Cities. Uh, Clarendon is this little village here with a hedge wall just next to an old ruined keep. Uh, if we were wondering where we are, I've showed a bunch of places in this world already, so that is Evergreen Castle, over there is Black Hole, and to the west is uh, Marsh Castle and Newport and some of my bigger builds. Uh, so the way we kind of enter this land currently, the paths aren't fully done. I only finished this build last night. But if we want to head over to Clarendon, we go first through this drawbridge. So here we have a double kind of weighted mechanism, which is going to raise these two bits up and allow ships to pass through this little river. Uh, I'm probably going to build a ship on this river in a little bit just to show the point of the drawbridge. Uh, but if we pass through here, we're going to come along a little ruined farmhouse. So uh, I built this house as a test for the style because uh, I needed to know how I would feel about building in this sort of uh, aesthetic. So before I went on to the proper houses, I built this little one. So this is a ruined version of the houses we're going to see. Uh, if we come inside, I'll get a torch because this might be dark. But if we come inside here, we can see that there is a bit of glow lichen, uh, there's a bit of ruined furniture and stuff, there's a furnace in the wall, and the roof is caving in and stuff, and it's kind of getting flooded. And back here is a little uh, paddock for some sheep. So continuing along the path, we're going to get uh, past this little more ruined house. Uh, we're going to get up to Clarendon. Uh, Clarendon is kind of a real town name, but I it, this is based more off of my creative writing stuff because I just picked a name out of uh, what I like from there. I also consider calling it White Acre, but uh, the whole acre thing makes more sense with farms, so this is uh, it didn't really fit to me. So I give you a look around. Uh, this is like an old forest area that was cleared, and all around it we have a hedge wall. Uh, with occasionally some little ditches. So the ditches are just these little bits here to provide a bit more uh, protection. And the hedge walls are made up of mangrove root, azalea, and oak leaves. Uh, the mangrove and azalea look more like some dead bushes, and the oak leaf look more like the uh, spreading lively bits. Coming around this side of the town, we have a small cemetery. And over here, we have the ruined keep, and I'm going to save that bit for the end. And you can see those red bits over there are where I'm planning out a path to my next build, which is going to be over in the distance. Because I want to connect this whole thing around to Greenfield and make it like a loop. Um, someone suggested adding more um, branching paths and loops and stuff uh, for the roads in my world, and I, I want to take that suggestion and really run with it. So getting into Clarendon itself, we can see that the uh, dirt here changes. It's more like a reddish uh, pale dirt than what I usually build with, which is more like a deep brown. Um, one of the concepts I wanted to run with for Clarendon, uh, I'll get to that in a moment, uh, is the idea that all these houses have a lot of uh, little buildings around them. So you can see here, uh, we have an L shape and then there is uh, a small shed, another small shed, um, a little building here, and then there's a storage room here, um, a stables, and a little place to eat, and a place for the poop for the horses. So instead of just having one little house here, it's like this whole little compound. And um, all these houses are like that. They all have their own little compounds. So I'm going to start with the ale house. You come into the town from a long day of traveling, and the thing you want most is just to sit down and have a hot meal and a drink. So entering into Ayla's Ale House, we have a small area here where you can get served uh, some ale. This is the living quarters, and this is uh, the spot where you would like sleep, and this is a bit more closed off and private. Uh, one of the things that distinguishes this build from my other builds, especially uh, like Sarneville and New Getem, is that instead of trying to use a lot of like really colorful, bright things, um, 
using like the torch flowers and all little plant pots and stuff. Um, this is trying to be a lot more down to earth. And the only real bits of color in this build are the blue doors. Uh, if you're wondering why the doors are blue, it's it's because this whole building style is based off of a little uh, like uh, a little like ceramic maquette I have. Um, so yeah, it's it's like based off like a proper thing. Uh, so the idea is like an ale house isn't a proper tavern. It's just someone's house where they happen to have a bit of extra ale that they're brewing. Uh, so in this case, you can. There aren't that many seats inside. You'd mostly be sitting outside. Uh, you could hitch up your horse. And here we have some of the wool storage for this town because this is a town with a lot of sheep. In this backyard area, we have the outhouse. And uh, something I've been enjoying doing is doing these little kind of like garbage cans with bits of brick sherds or pottery sherds. Um, when you're doing archaeology, you find a lot of little like bits of broken brick because mostly what you're excavating is trash and things that people threw away. Uh, so I think it looks really cool to have like little bits of garbage spilling out. Taking out the torch again, we can come down here. So there's two bits to this basement. I'm going to turn down the sheep because that that's horribly annoying. Me. Uh, so here we are brewing our ale. You can see that we basically have a big uh, stone thing of water here, and then we have a little fire going underneath. Uh, and you can imagine like we have this big spoon here for like turning it uh, and mixing it together and stuff. Here we have a small storage area. So here we have our barrels uh, and pots of ale and a little uh, shelf here. And there is something down there that I'm gonna show you uh, at the end of this little village tour. There are two backyards for this house. Um, I'm not gonna show you all the backyards in super detail, but this is the first house. So coming into here, we have a little dog house. Uh, excited for 1.25 and the new dogs. Here is a little shed, uh, just storing some old bits and bobs. And then here we have our black and gray sheep in this little paddock here. So the center of the town is this cross. Uh, I said I was going to move away from like doing all the Christian imagery because it's getting a little bit old, but I found this cross design that I really loved and I thought it fit like really perfectly in the center of this town as a little um, central point. Um, and it makes this town feel like it's almost like a pilgrimage site. Um, and I, I really like that. So I'm not building a church for this town, but there is still uh, something that people would come here for and under the town uh we're gonna see the kind of flip side of that so this is the kind of bright sunny exterior of the town and then when we get down below um you'll see that there's kind of like a darker mirror um so we have another house here this is a little farmer's house it's a little bit simpler uh there's only one room and it's separated by a little wooden curtain and we have another farmer's house here. So again, going with that whole shed motif, uh, we have a small well design. Uh, this is kind of influenced by a, a build I did a couple years ago, Cargal Castle. And you can see that there's another sheep paddock on this side and another outhouse. If we come around back here, there's another cellar. Uh, so all these builds basically have cellars. And I will take you inside this house because it's a lot of the same. Uh, this is the last house that has uh, anything really interesting. So this is the butcher's house. Um, I don't usually do a lot of butchers because it's in a city. When you do a butcher build, it's really hard because you don't have a place for like the animals and stuff. And it's kind of cramped and weird. Um, and this is also kind of cramped. So essentially the idea being like anybody who wants meat from this guy is just going to be like your neighbor. So you don't need a whole storefront. You just walk in here. Uh, you'd say like, hey, hi, Bill, how's it going? And then uh, he would give you like whatever you ask for. So here you can see that he's giving someone a bit of raw mutton. And that's this little like living area. Here is the bedroom with a goat's horn. And then this is the smoking room. 
So this is where they were taking the meat and we're drying it out to preserve it and stuff and to, you know, get rid of some of that bacteria. And here we have a little like smoker. If we get into the backyard, uh, we have here a little like place to slaughter the sheep. So uh, I use levers in my builds a lot to look like uh, like a big axe or a big hatchet that's been laid down. Uh, that's an old BWO trick. And this is a barrel of offal um, or like basically meat and guts and stuff. There is another cellar there and I just want to show you uh, there's a garbage here where we're dumping some of this stuff. And it's nice you can see the castle in the distance there. So coming down into the cellar, we have some salt uh, for preserving the meat and some other barrels. Uh, if we cram, cram behind here, uh, there is a little smoking area. So this is where we're feeding uh, that fire up there. And now I'll take you into what this place is kind of hiding. So underneath all these houses, underneath all the cellars, is this little central area. Uh, I am going to raise the brightness, but here we have uh, kind of like a dark altar worshipping site with like corruption spreading from the altar and there is a dragon egg in the middle. Uh, I've, I was inspired uh, by another little like weird altar I did in another house. Uh, and I've been meaning to build an altar in... Uh, under the Newport sewers, I want to make a second level under there once we get the new uh, tough blocks. So I'm kind of trying to establish uh, that there's like this secret cult that's like slowly spreading underneath all of uh, Tredegor. So this is one step in that. And you can see that there is uh, like a dagger here and a bit of uh, water to like wash your hands. Um, I like the idea that like underneath all the Christian imagery of this place, there is something like darker and um, maybe the cross that we see above is like to lure people here uh, so that we can kill the villagers or something like that. Uh, it's a little bit dark, but I don't, it's not like, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's too bad. So that's mostly it for Clarendon Village. Uh, there's a couple of little like extra bits. Uh, for instance, behind this house, there is a little turnip patch. Um, but we're going to step out now and we're going to exit through this door. Welcome to Clarendon. So over here, we have a little cemetery. You can see it's only about half filled up and here we're using uh, some of the deep slate blocks uh, that have been uh, debugged into staying open all the time. So these are just like walls that have been uh, kind of manipulated. And here we have a couple candles. Uh, usually I'd put the candles like next to the graves, but in this case I wanted it to look uh, kind of like a little altar thing. So it's a mirror kind of of the altar below and of the cross in the center of the town. And the last thing to show you, uh, I really like this build. So there's a town in uh, D&D's Faerun setting called Rassalantar, where people have been stealing the stones from an old ruined keep to put uh, into their houses. And this is a pretty common medieval practice. Whoops, sorry. And what I wanted to do is put that into my own world. So here we can see that there is a ruined keep and we're stealing some of these bricks and like stones and stuff. Uh, to bring them into the town and build our houses and our little um, like cellars and stuff. The keep itself is a Norman style keep, uh, meaning it's basically just a square with a couple of towers in every corner. You can see one of the towers here has completely collapsed into the water. And it's a pretty simple design uh, with a lot of green in it. It um, I tried to work with the blocking of this place. So the idea being that like when you're approaching the town, you only see a little bit of the tip. And then as you get further into the town, uh, it becomes more obvious uh, what you're really looking at. Uh, so let's take a look inside. There are a couple of levels to this place. Here you can see another uh, collapsed tower. 
so this is level one. Here we have a bunch of plants and stuff that have been taking over this level. So we have a tree in the middle, this little spindly thing. Uh, and we can also see that there are bits of uh, stalactites and roots and stuff that are hanging down. And this floor used to be uh, plastered. So we're using brown mushroom blocks here to look like uh, this floor used to have like an interior kind of side to it. And of course, any good ruin has to have a chimney. So that's a little fireplace and on the outside, whoops, you can see that there is a kind of weird little chimney here. If we go up to the second level, uh, here you can see the top of the tree and it's completely open to the sky here. Uh, we have all these like little bay windows things. Whoops, goodness. Uh, and then this final level is even more destroyed. And here we have bird nests with um, sniffer eggs. So in the past, I used to use, just use uh, chicken eggs. And I think these look like uh, some pretty interesting eggs. So uh, the idea being maybe there's like some kind of weird vulture species that's like roosting up in this place. Uh, there's another one up here, actually. Uh, this roof is following the same style as those ones, uh, except here we're using uh, some of the copper to look like it's overgrown and it's pretty much completely collapsed in. Uh, you can see each of the towers is kind of different, so this one completely collapsed. Uh, this one is pretty much fine. This one is a little bit more damaged uh, and you can walk kind of up into it. And then this one kind of broke off at the top here when this whole wall kind of like collapsed. And you can see that uh, some of it is still down there whereas some of it has been taken by the villagers. So yeah, this has been Clarendon Castle. Uh, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Stick around for next time. Uh, I'll tell you what we're doing next time actually. So in the next build that I want to do, uh, following this little red road here. Uh, I've marked out this space and here I want to put a battlefield uh, inspired a lot by The Witcher 3. Uh, there's some areas in White Orchard, Valen, and Skellige where you can see the remnants of like old battles that just happened and I want to do kind of like a war-torn no man's land kind of area here uh, and this is just a little bit away from the Greenfield uh, logging camp and from Red Lake over there. That is going to do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.